Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 17th, and it is a rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. C'est la vie. I put that in there for you, Christian. I am smoking some Haunted Bookshop in a Lane Crown Achievement pipe, and we will be changing that shortly. I'm almost done with this bowl, and i got to get to the uh, tobacco of the week and enjoying some uh, Crown Achievement coffee. Some 8 o'clock coffee. There we go. So, i got a little story to tell you. Had some fun this weekend. And, uh, yeah. So, if you remember from last week, I, I, I had a problem where my bandsaw needed to get some repair work done on it. Uh, I had to change the guide bearings. I've done that. I got the new bearings in. It's running beautifully. I'm very happy with it. So I'm glad I'm glad that happened. I got a much better tool now and uh, things are going very smoothly. Uh, so as I was doing that, I don't remember if I mentioned this last weekend or not, but I ran into a problem. It's a grizzly tool. It's made in Taiwan. Uh, pretty good quality though. Uh, if, you're, if you're shopping for grizzly and you have ask them if the tool was made in Taiwan or China. The Taiwanese tools seem to be a better quality. Uh, just if, you, if you're shopping at Grizzly. I've had really good success with Grizzly tools. Anyway, because it's made in Taiwan, um, it's metric, and I needed a socket wrench, and of course it was the 10 millimeter, and I couldn't find it. And I've discovered, because this has been a problem through life, uh, can't find the 10 millimeter. It's the one that seems to be used the most often out of the metric set, and it's always missing. And I was chatting with my friend Eric and my friend uh, Couch about this, and they both said, oh yeah, they're, they're missing all the time, and they're the ones you use most often, so you lose them and stuff. It makes sense. And I didn't realize this was like a global phenomenon where people couldn't find their 10 millimeter sockets. So I couldn't find my 10 millimeter socket. I also couldn't find the extender, uh, the short extender, or the adapter that goes from half inch to quarter inch. And since about half of my sockets are quarter inch, that was a real problem that I couldn't find that adapter because, you know, it takes out half the sockets. So that's kind of the background. Oh, there's one more thing. I'm out of Haunted Bookshop, so I will reload this as I talk. So the other piece of background is that I knew that somewhere in this house I had the extender, the adapter, and I had hoped the 10 millimeter socket because I'd seen at some point over the past year or so I had seen, oh, and there was a missing socket wrench too, but I had another. I had seen those. I remember doing something and saying, oh, there they are, but I didn't take the time to pick them up and put them where they belong and I couldn't find them again. So this is about a year that I've been looking for these things. I'm going to give that a minute to cool down before I repack it. But I knew they were somewhere, and it was driving me nuts because I couldn't find them. And I looked all over when I was looking for the 10 millimeter. I couldn't find it. I wound up using a, a little combination wrench, you know, box and, and open end, and it worked fine. So I... I knew it was somewhere in the house, but I couldn't find it. And I was really bothered by this adapter, the half inch to quarter inch adapter. So I wound up the other day going on Amazon and finding a cheap set of adapters and uh, got a message yesterday as I was preparing to do a job that it was going out for delivery. And I said, oh, great, I'll have, I'll have that. So the job I was preparing to do was some, some yard carpentry and uh, I'll show you a couple of pictures of this. So, well, this is what I, I had to build. So this is a ramp. And this is the new ramp. The old ramp is this guy. Oops. The old ramp is this guy here. Now, this doesn't look terrible. I built this probably, eh, probably 14 years ago. 13, 14 years ago. Um... Made out of pressure treated. You can see there's a missing uh, board there. 
Uh, it doesn't look too terrible, but this is the back side of it. The other side, uh, I've, I've re-screwed these boards multiple times. They're, they're just, they're starting to rot out. They're, they're just really not ideal. And the biggest problem with this is up at the top there, which you can't really see, uh, there's the part that sort of hangs over the concrete that holds the whole thing up was rotted out really badly. So it was, it was going to collapse into the, you know, you were going to stand on the ramp and it was going to collapse. So I had to replace the whole thing or do some major surgery on it. And I thought, well, heck, I'll just buy all new pressure treated lumber and start fresh. And, and that's what I did. And I'm pretty happy with what I, ah, come on, work right. There we go. Pretty happy with what I came up with. So that's it. Now, uh, there's a couple problems here. First off, ignore my lack of grass. I, I know. And, and that flower bed that's off to the left there is coming down. I know it's terrible. Just ignore all that. Um, I'm really annoyed. The spacing on the boards are perfect, except there's one board that's not spaced properly. And that's because it was the last board I put in. I technically should have ripped that down a little bit. At this point, my back was killing me, and there was just no way I was going to rip that board down. So I'm just living with that. Maybe I'll take it out at some point and fix it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, otherwise, it's great. I, I redesigned it a little bit so it's not hanging off the concrete anymore. It's actually uh, it's actually on legs in the back, so I don't have to worry about that now. So this is all uh, well. Everything's everything's good. So that was a success. The reason we have that ramp is it's for the dogs and we don't really need it. My dogs can leap over that flower bed with no problem. They're still young and spry. But back when I had George and Buckley, my beagle and my, uh, my, um, uh, what was he? Uh, it was a retriever mix, uh, mm, a black lab mix, uh, wonderful dog, George. I uh, loved that dog. Well, they both started to have trouble with their joints and they couldn't climb steps anymore. So I built that ramp so they could go out, get off the patio, do the business, come back up. And, and they loved it. I loved it. I used it quite a few times just to like wheelbarrow stuff up. Like when I was working on that refrigerator, uh, the, the, the basement refrigerator, I had to take it out into the yard so that it could uh, defrost and, and that big block of ice could come out of it. Uh, so, you know, getting it on the wheelbarrow and taking it down, or actually I was using a, a dolly. Uh, I could take it down that ramp. So it's been really useful to have that ramp there. And my wife likes it. So we decided to replace it rather than just get rid of it. Even though the dogs can use the steps. Okay. So I go over to Home Depot and I buy all the lumber. That was, that was pretty good. Uh, didn't have too much trouble there. Uh, although, boy, it's wet and there was a lot of mold on the boards, which kind of surprised me. I, didn't like that because I don't like mold. I'm allergic to it and I think most people are allergic to it. Anyway, picked out the right boards, got them home, no, no major issues there. And then I had to gather up the tools. So I come down here and I'm getting my, my uh, screw gun and, and circular saw and all the various bits and pieces that I need. And I said, gee, I should carry these in something. I said, oh, I've got a one of those five gallon Home Depot buckets that I use to pile tools in. And when I looked at that, this was in it. This is a collection of stuff. Um, and if you look way down at the bottom there, on the upper sort of left-hand side, about the 11 o'clock position, you can see there's a socket wrench. And I went, oh, that's where it is. That's where it is. And sure enough, when I sorted through this stuff, oops. I found my missing socket wrench, the extension, and the adapter. Fantastic. I found those right around the time that this was dropped off on my doorstep, my new set of adapters. And I've got every adapter you could ever need, and actually some adapters you're never going to need. <laughs> it's a cheap set made in, made in China. Uh, you know, I could buy Craftsman or, or Snap-on or something, but I'm not a mechanic. And the truth is I have to treat these things as consumables because I know I'm going to lose them. Uh, for the amount of, the number of times I use a socket set, these are just fine and uh, they're, they're cheap and replaceable, easily replaceable. Uh, I thought it was nice of the, 
the Chinese to put it in a, one of these tear-off Ziploc pouches. I have no idea why I'd ever want to zip this pouch up again, but hey, such is life. So as you would predict, the minute this was dropped on my step, approximately, I found the missing adapter. But I didn't find the 10 millimeter socket wrench. <laughs> that is still missing. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know if, if, if the government's going around collecting them all up. Um, aliens are taking them. They're going off into a, a, a wormhole somewhere, but nobody can find the 10 millimeter sockets. And I don't, it, it's just, it's a mystery. <laughs> But uh, got the got the ramp built. That was that was fun. I enjoyed doing it. Um, got to use the circular saw, which I don't use very often. Got to use my screw gun and deck screws, which is <clears throat> always fun because I use the posi drive and they just fly in. And I got the uh, it's an impact wrench that I, that I uh, that I use for that. That really you know drives them in nicely. So yeah, an, an impact gun, I should say. Anyway, it was it was a good day. But man, my back was killing me by the time I was done. <clears throat> so, tobacco of the week, chosen by the folks on the Friday Night Live stream, is Mixture 79. It's a big tub of Mixture 79 from my buddy Ben, the Artful Codger. So thank you, Ben. I enjoy this. Don't smoke it very often, but <clears throat> only because it's, it's special, not because it's, uh, it's not good. Uh, it's not something I want to smoke every day, to be honest, but I like it. So I'm going to pack that up. I'll show you what the tobacco looks like in a second. Now, I've, I've done a video on Mixture 79. This isn't going to be an in-depth uh, impressions video, but you know how this works. So I will be smoking this along with Haunted Bookshop this week, but this will be my alternate blend. A nice uh, granular sort of Middleton style mix. This is still available, and it is available in both pouches and tubs, and I think bulk as well. So if you want to try it, you can do that. And now I need a lighter. We'll get this going. So Mixture 79 is definitely a love it or hate it blend. You hear all this stuff about, you know, the bottom of your grandmother's purse and whatnot. Yeah, I can, I can pull out a perfumey like flavor, a little bit of a, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but like an aftershave kind of edge to it. But the dominant flavors for me are like a, a sweet vanilla, an anise or anise. And a lot of people say root beer, and I think it's because those two flavors combine in a way that <clears throat> makes it very root beery. Sorry, I got a frog in my throat this morning. And there's tobacco under that, which is nice. <laughs> Somebody asked on the live stream, is it an aromatic? And I guess the answer is yes, because it's topped and the topping is flavored. But it's not your traditional goopy American aromatic. Um, <clears throat> it's very, the tobacco really is a big player in this and it's not very wet. You know, even fresh pouches, they're, they're, they're smokable as is. You don't have to dry them or anything. I believe that every pipe smoker should try Mixture 79. It's one of the oldest American blends that you can get. <clears throat> it's unique. There's no question about it being unique. And you might hate it. But for the price of a pouch, you at least know whether you're in the hate it or love it camp. 
There's no middle ground on this one. So I get the ramp finished and I had a Yingling and some Advil. <laughs> and I'm sitting out there with the dogs and I'm, I'm waiting to see them walk up and down the new ramp and they just ignored it. They just, I thought they'd at least go and sniff it or something. Nope, they just ignored it. So last night as I'm getting ready to go to bed, <clears throat> I let them out for the last time for the night. And I go to call them in, and I see Thatcher is coming towards the ramp, and I'm like, oh boy. She gets to the bottom of the ramp, and she like puts a paw on it, and she puts two paws on it and taps them. She was afraid of it. <laughs> I promised her it was okay, and she came scuttling up it. <laughs> Looked terrified. I know from a dog's point of view that was just the novelty, but from my point of view it felt like she wasn't trusting my workmanship. I'll get over it. So today, back feels a lot better. It is raining. Um, if the rain stops, I've got to disassemble that old ramp. <coughs> I gotta disassemble that and uh, I'm gonna try to salvage what wood I can. And I got some extra wood from Home Depot yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna build myself a little saw buck for logs so that I can, the logs I have left from the mulberry tree or any future logs that I might get for bowl turning, I can put on that and cut safely with the, uh, with the chainsaw. I told my wife I was going to do that, and she just said, okay. I don't think she knows what a sawbuck is, so we'll see how happy she is with having that in the corner of the yard. But I'm going to make it relatively small because I'm not going to have any giant logs. It just has to be big enough to hold them safely off the ground so that when you cut with the chainsaw, there's no worry about it hitting the ground. What I've been doing so far is either putting them on top of other logs or putting them on the ground, cutting halfway through and then flipping it and cutting it the rest of the way, which of course you never get it lined up properly. So yeah, it'll, it'll be good to do that. To have the buck saw, saw buck, saw buck. Yeah. But that's probably not going to happen today because of the rain. The concrete work finally started. They showed up on Friday and they've taken, they've broken up about half of our sidewalk. Um, they're saying it's going to be about an eight day project. And tomorrow they're going to break up our driveway. So at that point, I'm, I'm going to have to park on the street, which is going to be odd because I don't normally do it. And, uh, I'm probably going to wind up taking somebody else's spot, which I feel bad about, but we'll work it out. I mean, I feel bad about it in the same way that, you know, I, I'd be a little ticked off if I came home from work and there was somebody in my driveway, right? So it's the same basic idea. But there's plenty of parking around, around the house. I'm on a corner and there's, there's two streets that I can park on, so we'll work something out. The real challenge is going to be once they start pouring the concrete, actually getting into the house, because everything's going to be new concrete. So to get into the house, I'm going to have to actually go through a neighbor's driveway, walk across the lawn, uh, go into the backyard and come up and through the back door. Normally, I just come in through the garage, so. Again, not a big deal, just I don't like it when my, when my routine gets altered, so. Mm. 
I do enjoy this Mixture 79. Uh, again, not something I smoke every day just because it's so different. I don't find that it ghosts the pipe. Um, maybe if I smoke like four or five bowls it would, but if it's just one bowl, it doesn't seem this ghosted at all. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to enjoying this this week. Probably just one bowl a day. Ah, uh, so for today, I already said I'm going to try to work on that ramp, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. I got a little bit of stuff that I want to do down here. Um, I got a lot of stuff I want to do down here, but I'm not really... After yesterday, I don't think I want to do too much. I'll just take it a bit easy and uh, see what the day holds. My wife is home. She came home last night. She's been gone for over two weeks, so it's wonderful to have her back. It's funny, I woke up this morning gathering up stuff to, to go into the to the shower and I'm, I'm walking out of the room and I hear this sound like she she had just inhaled or a snore or something like that it was just a loud breathing sound she made and it startled me because because I had forgotten she was there <laughs> dogs were very happy to see her so life is back to back to normal again Until she has to go back. And our anniversary is coming up um, next week. It's a big one. It's the 25th. And uh, although we've been talking about it for months, we have completely failed to make any plans. So that's, that's nice. <laughs> we'll have a good time. We'll go out to dinner. We're, we're going to do something, but not next week. Uh, we'll plan a trip of some sort and have some fun. It's, it's a busy time coming up um, between that and I'm going to go up to Vermont the first week in October to visit my brother and sister and uh, help them with some, some work on the house. A lot, lot to be done. Going to be a busy guy for a little while. And then we go into uh, the holiday season. It starts with Halloween in my in my world. I'm really looking forward to that. I hope I'll be able to show you soon, next week maybe. Uh, I just ordered a new tamper from Larry Blackett. I don't need a new tamper, but he's come out with this really, really cool Frankenstein monster tamper. It's, it's beautiful. It's the head of the monster on a, on a tamper and it's got a bolt, uh, well actually a nut, but just below the head. It looks really cool. So if you if you go to Instagram and look up buttons for your britches with the number four um, in, in, the, in the phrase, you'll find Larry Blackett and uh, he'll, he probably has some pictures up of this, but it's a really cool tamper. Oh, Eric the Blue Collar Pipe Smoker has one and he's been showing it off on Instagram. So. You can check that out. Uh, he's easy to find. Just search for Little Schmuck. I think. No, no, it's it's Eric the Blue Collar Pipe Smoker is what you have to search for. I think there's a number at the end of it or something, but if you if you search for that, you'll find him. Why there's a number at the end of it? I guess there were two of them. I don't know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to Halloween. Don't know what I'm going to do this year. I'm probably not going to have time for one of my full Halloween videos, so we'll have to see. But we usually have a Halloween party on a live stream of sorts and talk about spooky stuff and whatnot. Maybe I'll do a ghost story call-in or something like that.
Nothing like sitting in your basement on a Friday night listening to ghost stories. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Halloween. I, I don't know why it's, uh, to me, it's a pipe smoker's holiday. And I think it's because it's, you know, we're finally getting into that fall weather. The autumn leaves, the, if you're fortunate enough to be in an area where people still burn leaves, that that smell of burning leaves, that Christmas crisp crispness in the air. Not to be confused with Christmas in the air, which comes a bit later. Uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful time of year. Heck, I might even have to get out some Latakia. We'll see. Well, folks, with that, I'm going to drink some more coffee and uh, bring this video to an end. So thank you all for, for watching. Hey, if, if you can, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, I don't care about the numbers. I just want more people to be involved in the YouTube pipe community. And if you do that, it makes the algorithm make it easier for people to find the videos. So don't just do it for me. Do it for everybody that you enjoy watching. Make sure you're subscribed, like them, notification bell, all that stuff. It's important to grow the community. And uh, yeah, that's that's the only reason I'm asking you to do it. I don't, I don't care about the numbers for myself. So I'm going to finish up the Mixture 79 and get on with the day. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and are looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. Until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Thank mm -hmm. you.